pier has been battered by the surf and attacked by the sea creatures, not to mention the humans walking up and down. And that weakens a pier. So today, ocean lovers were able to stroll the new pier and enjoy a fantastic, gorgeous, sunny day. Yeah. Also, it stays open until midnight. So that's kind of Ooh. neat to get out there on a star-filled night, huh? Very nice. That does it for CBS 2 News at 5. I'm Harold Green. I'm Ann Martin. Thank you so much for watching at 5. Have a great weekend. And the News at 6 starts right now. You're watching Southern California's CBS 2 News at 6. Hello, I'm Jane Velez Mitchell. I'm Jonathan Elias. Gretchen Carr has the evening off. We begin this evening with the start of a holy weekend. It is coming up. Nine million California Catholics are preparing to celebrate Easter Sunday. But as bishops encourage the faithful, they are also trying to purge their diocese of priests who have committed sexual abuse. CBS 2 News reporter Juan Fernandez is live in downtown with more on this one for us. Juan? Well, Jonathan, the LAPD is saying that the Archdiocese is being very cooperative in these investigations, especially since more victims keep coming forward to tell their story. On one of the most solemn days in the Roman Catholic Church, Cardinal Roger Mahoney celebrated Good Friday services at St. Luke's Church in Temple City. There he spoke to the faithful about the violence in Israel, September 11th, and even touched upon the scandal that has rocked the church worldwide. Allegations of child abuse at the hands of priests. Within the church too, our own scandals that we're having to deal with. Uh, seemingly uh, every day there's something new. And we just wonder when, when will all of this end? LAPD Commander Gary Brennan says the Archdiocese has been cooperative, providing as much information to investigators as they can. They gave us information about old cases that have already gone through the, the legal process, and they gave us information about new cases that have just come to light. Those new cases involved old incidents. In other words, these are cases where the victims are now adults but were children when the incidents occur. Earlier in the week, Cardinal Mahoney said the church as a whole was not obligated by law to report cases of abuse. But as more and more cases continue to surface, the rules have changed. They understand the rules for reporting these, this kind of abuse. They have assured us that they will continue to report these things to the Los Angeles Police Department as it is appropriate. And we're confident that they're going to continue to do that. And today the LAPD released this phone line. It is the LAPD sexual abuse hotline. It is out there for anyone who may be a possible victim of sexual abuse at the hands of a priest to give them a call directly. And that is the very latest from here. I'm Juan Fernandez. Jane, back to you. Juan, thank you for that. A Southland mother is under arrest tonight, charged with leaving her two children home alone. They were found by firefighters in a burning apartment. It all happened on North 20th Street in Palmdale at about 12.30 this afternoon. Two children, ages one and five, were discovered alone in the burning apartment after firefighters were called to the scene. The children were treated for smoke inhalation. Their mother is facing child endangerment charges. Authorities say the fire started after the girl put a towel on a lamp. Jonathan. A couple weeks ago, they were talking peace. They're a long way off from that now in the Middle East. Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat remains in a lockdown at his headquarters as Israeli troops and tanks continue swarming his compound. Arafat has been in a windowless room all day long, making frantic calls, asking Arab leaders for help. Five Palestinians and an Israeli soldier have been killed as Israeli forces took over the West Bank city of Ramallah. Earlier today, Arafat spoke with CNN by phone, and he described the Israeli operation going on around him. They are uh, uh, increasing their uh, forces, their uh, uh, military activities uh, to follow up uh, their aggressions against uh, many other places, many other towns, many other cities. Uh, many other areas. Israeli officials say that they have no plans to kill Arafat, but rather to isolate him. In the meantime, many of the Southland folks here are wondering how this crisis in the Middle East affects us right here in the United States. CBS 2 News reporter Christina Penza is live in the newsroom with more on that part of the story for us. Christina? Well, Jonathan, this escalating unrest in the Mideast deeply affects the U.S., from our reliance on the region's oil to our concerns about terrorism. The attack on Arafat's headquarters raises new concern among some in the U.S. over the threat of terrorism. Professor Richard Dickmajian has spent years studying the complexities of the Mideast. The United States might be a target because of our support for Israel. Uh, and uh, that may not be justified, but again, terrorism is terrorism. 
Plus, if the U.S. goes after Saddam Hussein, the government wants the Arab states on its side. Also, the U.S. dependence on Arab oil keeps the country tied to the region. If the war escalates further... U.S. credibility will be undermined because eventually the Arab, Arab government leaders have to listen to their own populations. Those in Southern California are also touched by the violence from the woman who works in health care. We see patients who are not only physically hurt, but emotionally and psychologically worried about what's going on. To those who fear the growing bloodshed could directly reach the U.S. What it's going to do is, is inflame the situation more and is going to create more more terrorists. If we really want to fight terrorism and guard our interest in the United States, the security of the United States, we need to put an end to instability in the Middle East. And Digmasian believes the violence can only be stopped if the U.S. takes decisive diplomatic action. In the newsroom, Christina Penza, CBS 2 News, back to you. Christina, thank you. Another deadly military accident, this time right here in the Southland. Three soldiers are dead, another injured. The accident happened during a training exercise at Fort Irwin, about 120 miles east of Los Angeles. CBS 2 News reporter Angela Chi, they're live. She's got the details for us. Angela? Jane, this desert base is where thousands of soldiers come each year for realistic combat training. And that training includes live ammunition. And this morning, that trainer training left three soldiers dead. The three soldiers were inside an M1064 mortar carrier like this one when a 120 millimeter round exploded during a training exercise at 2.30 this morning. A round exploded inside the carrier, but we're not sure if it had been uh, not fired or if it had fired and exactly what had happened. It just really saddens you. You, know, you hate to hear that anytime on any kind of job and especially the military right now because they're really coming through for us. It happened at the northwest end of the base, 18 miles north of the main post. It was the last day of the month-long routine combat training for the 3,500 soldiers from the 1st Brigade from Fort Riley, Kansas. This is the only place in the world that they can do that at the brigade size level. They can put their entire unit on the field and operate in a doctrinal environment as if they would if they went to war. Fort Irwin trains about 3,000 to 5,000 soldiers at a time, at least 10 times a year. The last live fire death was in 1998. Safety investigators don't know exactly what caused the accident, but believe the three soldiers were following proper procedures. What they were doing this morning is dangerous training, but there are multiple steps that they take to ensure that uh, something does not happen. The injured soldier was identified as Jamie Ware, Private Jamie Ware from Indiana. He was treated and released from the hospital with just a few cuts and bruises. The names of the three others will not be identified until all the family is notified. Right now, they are still investigating the case. The brigade will head back to Kansas next week. No memorial services have been set. I'm Angela Chi at Fort Ir Irwin near Barstow. Back to you in the studio. Angela, thanks very much. Now we have a follow-up to the case of a San Bernardino police officer accused of sexually assaulting women while he was on duty. Now you heard the story first here on CBS 2 News. Today, a judge arraigned the officer via video teleconference. Prosecutors say they do not want to show Officer Ronald Van Rossum's face as of yet because they want other potential victims to be able to identify him based on their memories, not on news coverage. The 14-year veteran did not enter a plea. His defense attorney requested time to review what has become a mound of documents. Irvine police want you to take a look at a bizarre attacker wanted for pulling down women's panties. That's right. Police now have this sketch of the man. They say he has struck six times since September. Most of the attacks happened at Irvine apartment complexes between 5 and 7 at night. Detectives say the man targets blondes wearing dresses. The last woman he attacked was holding a baby. If you have any information on his whereabouts, please call Irvine Police and right away. Much more news for us straight ahead. An exclusive look at the new scientific gadgets inside this CSI-type crime lab. I'm Linda Braketon in Riverside County. Coming up. Plus, great news for folks in the San Fernando Valley. You're soon going to have a new place to play. And is your Easter bonnet going to be needed to be waterproof? <laughs> we'll tell you about it because meteorologist Jim Castillo checks in to give us the forecast. It's all coming up next. Real-time captioning provided by Samsung, where everyone's invited. See the latest in computer monitors and wireless phones at SamsungUSA.com.
Kevin Jewelers manufactures its own jewelry, and that's why every day you save up to 70% off on quality jewelry with no money down and no interest for 12 months. Savings every day, like this quarter carat diamond solitaire engagement ring, was $699, now only $199. What's really the best value? A discount spiral slice supermarket ham or a club store ham? Or the guaranteed quality of a tender, slow-smoked honey-baked ham for about 75 cents more per person? What's the best value? Taste test prove your guests know the right answer. So don't risk your holiday meal. For about 75 cents more, you can serve each guest tender honey-baked ham with our famous crackling sweet glaze. Honey-baked ham. Only at the Honey-Baked Ham Store. He sung in the shower for decades. Oh, so and now that he's won the Super Lotto Plus jackpot, he's recorded an album. Howard Sings the Classics, a 17 CD set of your favorite recordings, all sung by Super Lotto Plus winner Howard Bowman. Oh, Susanna, Funiculi, Funicula, and more. If you like music, even a little, you're going to love Howard Bowman. Super Lotto Plus, it's your dream, play it. Kevin Jewelers manufactures its own jewelry, like these quarter carat diamond earrings, originally $370, now $99. So come in today to any of Kevin Jewelers' mall locations and get up to 70% off. No money down and no interest for 12 months on quality jewelry every day. One local community is getting close to building a long-awaited recreation center. The folks in Burbank have worked for more than a decade to open a major park near downtown. The city now has the $5 million needed to make that happen. The plan includes building a recreation center, a basketball court, soccer fields, picnic tables, tot lots, and a school for troubled teens in place of these homes and buildings. And the park could be open by the end of next year so those folks can get ready to celebrate real soon. That'd be nice. Yeah. Speaking of celebrating, you're just downright giddy today, aren't you? It's Friday. That <laughs> happens when the it's Friday. The weather may cooperate with us, too. You can take a happy mood into a good weekend. Jim, is it going to rain on our parade this weekend? No. None at all. None at all. Absolutely nothing out there. But uh, can I spit that out? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it was hard for me to say. <laughs> but we do have the marine layer to deal with tonight. Low clouds, fog going to be pushing in again uh, as we head to the nighttime hours. All right, let's go to the weather map to see what's going on. 63 was a high today in uh, Los Angeles. A cool afternoon for sure. 71 is a normal high, 99 the record and sunset at 612 in about one minute. Northridge, Long Beach, and Anaheim in the 60s today. Newport Beach only a chilly 59. Now, as we head through the weekend, this huge area of high pressure is going to keep upper 60s, maybe even mid-60s for part of the coastal sections. But as this thing builds, we're going to see 70s definitely for Los Angeles, 80s into the Inland Empire, and possibly Woodland Hills area, and then 90 degrees. Yep, Palm Desert, Indio, and Palm Springs. Fantastic weather, extremely dry weather throughout the entire weekend and early next week. All right, so overnight lows look like this tonight. Again, that low cloudiness and fog pushing in. About 55 in Los Angeles, 51 in Van Nuys, and 47 in Santa Clarita. Highs tomorrow, 89, Palm Springs, 80 in San Bernardino, and then there you go at the coast, a little bit cooler. That's what you like. Head to the coast, 69 in uh, Santa Monica and 70 in Long Beach, 64 for Huntington Beach. All right, five-day forecast is showing temperatures. This is for L.A. in the 70s, close to 80, even early next week. And that carries the Easter egg hunting on Sunday. But, uh, gosh, 80s in some of the valleys and uh, looks like 90s for the low desert. Forget spring, uh, we'll just go right on to summer. Exactly. <laughs> That's what's happening. I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah, I know you are. We have an exclusive look at Southern California's own CSI. We will take you inside the new high-tech lab that is keeping criminals off our streets. Plus, will Jodie Foster's new movie leave you in a real panic? David Sheehan ans answers in a second. I'm Jim Hill, live at the Staples Center, where the Lakers are going against the Portland Trail Blazers tonight. I will have a preview of that game coming up for you at the Staples Center. And I'll also explain what Fuzzy Zeller was doing with the Easter Bunny. That and more is next in sports. CBS 2 News is sponsored in part by Albertsons. It's your store. Presenting a fresh reason to try us. And some extra incentives to sweeten the pot. This week at Albertsons, save on green seedless grapes, just 67 cents a pound. C&H granulated sugar, just $1.49 and selected varieties of Dryer's Grand Ice Cream. Two for just $6. Looking for thousands of bonus buys? Albertsons, it's your store.
Lexus IS 300 E-Shift, Sport Cross, or 5-Speed. Now all with lease payments starting at just $399 per month for 39 months with $2,240 due at signing. Hurry to your Lexus dealer today. Just down the road. Catch the excitement of thoroughbred racing at Santa Anita Park, now through April 21st. Or watch and wager at your local satellite wagering facility. On the next Entertainment Tonight. What do you think of when I say, the plane, the plane? John Ritter hosts a tour of your favorite TV homes, from Happy Days to the Brady Bunch with Peter. You know, they say you can never go home. Watch me. Goober from the Andy Griffith Show. You all didn't forget, did you? Inside JR South Fork and the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> Plus, Star Jones's party in Jamaica next ET. Tonight at 7 on CBS 2. Fans of the CBS drama CSI, and there are a lot of them, they know that the key role that high tech crime labs play in solving crimes. Well, tonight, a real life CSI has opened here in Southern California. It is located in Glen Avon, that's in Riverside County. And CBS 2 News reporter Linda Breakstone is there to give us an exclusive look inside. We're all ears, Linda. Well, Jonathan, this was $14 million in the making, and it even has its own FTIR spectrometer. Here we go. State Attorney General Bill Lockyer cut the cake for the grand opening of the high tech Riverside Crime Lab. This is the best and the biggest. Lab director Art Young operated a tiny facility. Now he commands a scanning electron microscope able to magnify 300,000 times. We tested my black glove. We can take that piece of evidence without any alteration and put it into the microscope. At times 200, the stitching on the glove looks like rope. This That's kind of a particle here would be a good example of something that we could find and then match you to a crime scene. They have an FTIR spectrometer, which when looking at a paint chip, can determine the make, model, and year of the car that dropped it off at a crime scene. We know it's a truck and that it's a Chrysler and it's actually a Jeep. And the most updated horizontal bullet recovery tank. The point is to try to see if the bullet from the crime scene, from the dead person or wherever else it came from, was fired by the, the submitted firearm. This machine tests for all types of illegal substances. You can't get a conviction unless you can reliably do scientific analysis to know what the substance was. Please swipe driver's license. Here's the latest drunk driving field test. It takes your license, your breath, and spits out the results. Now, one of the greatest advantages for this community, this crime lab can now plug into the national DNA database, something law enforcement in this area could not do before. I'm Linda Breakstone reporting live in Riverside County. Back to you, Jane. Pretty impressive. Thank you for that, Linda. A follow-up to a story we brought you last night about a promise from L.A. Mayor Jim Hahn to ease traffic congestion. Yesterday, we found few or no traffic officers on the job. But today, a different story. The deputy chief of the L.A. City Department of Transportation tells CBS 2 News he takes full responsibility for the lack of officers. His department is launching an investigation and will correct the problem. Let's talk sports. Jim Hill is out this evening. He has got the best seat in the house for the Lakers game. And, you know, it's crunch time now. No more missing, no more messing around here. You know, Jonathan, it's really kind of amazing what I'm about to say, but it is indeed true. It is a must-win situation for the Lakers as they take on the Portland Trail Blazers tonight here at 730. The game will be played at the Staples Center, the defending world champions, going against a team that uh, really they, uh, they haven't, uh, they've traveled, they've really managed to control recently, but right now, the Lakers currently trail Sacramento by a game and a half of the Pacific Division. And tonight, the Blazers are a team that's really, really starting to click. Rasheed Wallace always gives the Lakers problems, but he'll be out tonight with a bad a back. However, Laker head coach Phil Jackson says the key to Portland's recent success has been the play of someone else. Scotty Pippen is spelled S-C-O-I-T-T-I-E, yes. Um, Scotty is like, uh, you know, he's taken over the offense as far as directing it, and the defense has, you know, been natural for him to be a defensive leader and help them uh, play. And, you know, this is a team that's played together for a while. It's a good team, and uh, they're, they're playing well. 
In other NBA news, the Clippers have activated Fort Corey Maggette from the injured list, and he will be in the lineup tonight in Phoenix. Maggette missed the last 16 games while recovering from a dislocated hand and knee surgery. He's averaging 11 points and four rebounds a game for the Clippers so far this year. As far as golf is concerned, Lisa Let Neumann is leading, is leading by two shots after the second round of the Nabisco Championships. That is the LPGA's first major of the year. Meanwhile, on the men's side, VJ Singh was on fire today at the Houston Open at the par 3 16th hole. His second shot from the bunker is headed straight for the cup, and it's in for a great birdie. VJ fired a 7 under par round of 65. He has a two shot lead at 12 under par. Meanwhile, on the senior tour, it was opening round today of the Emerald Classic. And that's Fuzzy Zeller getting some shot advice from the Easter Bunny of all people. This is Dave Eichelberg on the par three eighth hole. His shot is right on line. And this it does something, Jonathan. Well, Jonathan, you've done this recently. I have a hole in one. Eichelberg has shot a five under par round of 67. He's two shots off the lead. Now, you know, Jonathan and Jane, I just got through saying that this is a big game for the Lakers tonight. It doesn't look like it. You look at how loose Lindsey Hunter, Brian, Sean, Mitch Richmond are out having a lot of fun with, with assistant coach uh, Kurt Rambis. But the Lakers indeed will turn serious tonight at about 7.30 when they take on the Portland Trailblazers. Highlights for you tonight at 11 o'clock. Reporting live from the Staples Center, Jim Hill, CBS 2 News. Jane and Jonathan, back to you now. There seems to be some confusion on the floor there behind you. I hope they get that cleared up before game time, Jim. There's Thanks. money on this shot. That's why. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. When they get serious, they get serious. Jody Foster returns to the screen for the first time in three years in Panic Room. David Sheehan has a review. Well, Gene, I'll tell you, this is one of those, uh, it may get you, it may not. I mean, it's creepy, it's crawly, it's crass, and it's crude. And a little too predictable, I'm afraid. But Panic Room is praiseworthy for a world-class portrayal of Courage Under Fire by Jody Foster. Jody brings an unusual amount of resolve and resonance to her panic room role of single mom on her first night in a new house with her daughter, suddenly faced with a life-threatening trio of home invasion burglars. What is he doing? They're locking us in. It's the courageous spirit brought to life by Jodie Foster that gives the picture its power, especially when the two women find themselves trapped in the house's so-called panic room for hours on end. What? He's saying that we don't have a phone. How could he know that? What we want is in that room. The claustrophobia of Panic Room is obviously unavoidable, so you do sit there sort of wishing the whole escapade would be over with at times, especially since surprises are at a minimum. But Jody is at a maximum. Jonathan, Jane. All right, David, thanks very much. I think that's a must miss. I just don't want to see a creepy film like that. We'll have a check on your Easter forecast coming up next. On the next Hollywood Squares, they're bold, they're beautiful, and they're the stars of one of your favorite soaps. You're put in jail because you've been caught speeding again. Can you now be strip searched? Oh, God, I hope so. <laughs> Me too. Uh... <laughs> Plus, Darman Greg's Mimi Kennedy. Yes, here's Liza Snyder. What are you? Oh. And NYPD Blues, Gordon Clapp. Next on Hollywood Squares. Tonight at 7.30 on CBS 2. There are many choices in full-size luxury SUVs, but there is still only one with some real teeth to it. Lincoln Navigator, number one in California since day one. Now available with the best offer ever, a $489 a month lease with $29.99 cash to its signing. At your California Lincoln Mercury dealer now. Hi, um, I want a dishwasher and I want the best deal. Well, we match any price. Hi, if I bought an appliance here and saw it for less, then what? Bring us the receipt within 30 days and we'll give you the difference. Right. <clears throat> yes, we price match. I'll take it. You, you got a little. With price matching, great credit options in the top six brands. The place for appliances is Sears. Where else? In this bottle of Behringer, a 125-year commitment to making great wine. From the only winery ever to win wine of the year for both a Cabernet and a Chardonnay. In this glass, the perfect complement to your own special moments, whatever they happen to be. Behringer, all we are in every bottle. The only place where every car will give you an instant feeling of exhilaration 
That one place is your Mazda dealer. And this weekend is a great time to take a test drive and experience the soul of a sports car that's in every Mazda. And take advantage of great offers. Right now, get limited term 0% APR financing on any 2002 Mazda or up to $2,750 cash back on select models. So don't miss out. Hurry to your Mazda dealer this weekend. And now let's check in with Harold Green in the newsroom for a look at what's ahead at 11. Harold. Jane, the Middle East crisis has hit a critical point. Yasser Arafat is trapped well, and appealing for help. What will Israelis and Palestinians do next? We'll have the very latest at 11. Plus, a rapist is on the loose in South Orange County. How women are protecting themselves tonight on CBS 2 News at 11. We'll see you then. See you then. Big weekend out in store. Lots oh, yeah. of folks going to be out on Sunday. What's the weather going to do? Agree with them? Fantastic. Absolutely. No rain at all expected, even though we need it. But we're not going to have it this weekend. 70s in Los Angeles, near 90 in the low desert, and about the upper 60s at the coast. Surf is one to three feet. Great. We're heading there. Have a good weekend. You too. Jim, thanks. Yeah. So important. Easter and the outfits at stake. That's it for us at 6. Thanks for catching up on the day's news on CBS 2 News at 6. I'm Jane Velez Mitchell. I'm Jonathan Elias. It's CBS Evening News coming your way next. Have a terrific weekend. I'll see you in a couple weeks. I'm going on vacation. We leave you. I don't know if you can read any of these. These are all the folks that we work with, and we are lucky <laughs> to work with them day in, day out. A Have a good weekend.